Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got something I want to show y'all. No, we're not going to talk about the Bible. Hey, Bobby, I'll be right back. So you just hold on. Sorry, I got to put Bobby on hold. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I truly do hate the English language. Now, I'm going to show you why. A lot of people are having a really difficult time with a lot of things. But what I want to show you is we're going to take a trip. We're going to go to, it's going to be roughly about the 22nd chapter, I do believe. And so when we get to the 22nd chapter of Luke, sorry, I should know the exact scripture, but this is me letting you know that I am, I am fallible. <laughs> anyway. Uh, don't know why it's got me still in the first. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna go to the twenty second chapter, and my hope is that it will take me there. I didn't ask for that, so let's go and do it my way, because that's the only way I can do it. So we're gonna do all publications. We're gonna go here. And we're going to go the study. And then we're going to go to Lucas. Lucas. Where you at, Luke? Lucas. And then we're going to go here. Yeah, I know it looks like a lot, but it's not really a lot. So we're going to start with the, yeah, we're going to go 22nd. Okay. Now, this is the time when somebody is about to be put to death. Okay. Judas leaves him, kisses him. Hey, how you doing? I'm about to stab you in the back. And so after we get to that, so it looks like we're going to be in the 23rd chapter because this is when he's being put to death. And I want to show you something about the English language. It is very important that you all understand what goes on with this stupid language. I really, I call it a stupid language. The reason why I call it a stupid language is because if you ever had, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. If you ever had an occasion to learn English and your mother tongue was not English, you know how difficult it is. Most of the times people who speak English makes fun of those who learn English and don't realize the feat it takes to understand this stupid language. Let me, let me go ahead and say this to you. A guy's in a hospital and his brother has just been treated by the doctor. And so the guy tells the doctor and he just says these words and I'm not gonna put it in context. I'm just gonna say the words. Doc, if you hadn't amputated my brother's leg, my brother would not have survived. Simple enough statement, huh? Or hadn't you amputated my brother's leg, he wouldn't have survived. Simple statement, huh? But let's say we take the statement and we bring it this way. Doc, because you amputated my brother's leg, or no, excuse me, if you had not have amputated my brother's leg, sorry, I am messing it up and that's a shame. I got a bug on my window and I'm distracted. I'm trying to do the statement this way, Doc, if it wasn't for you amputating my brother's leg, I don't think he would have survived. Okay, so let's take that very same statement. If it hadn't been you for you amputating my brother's leg, I don't think he would have survived. And we take the same statement, we go, Doc, if it wasn't for you amputating my brother's leg, 
I don't think he would have survived. But because you didn't amputate his leg, he's dead. Because of the way we say things in English, because of how we do sense stress, because of where we put punctuations, it makes a big difference. Ladies and gentlemen, the same was true in Greek, uh, individuals who lived in Roman times or individuals who lived prior to that. Sentence structure, sentence stress, context meant a lot. I'm going to give you a statement that is often misunderstood, and I'm going to prove to you the misunderstanding, and then we're going to have a conversation, okay? And then I'll bring Bobby back. It says, then one of the criminals hanging there began to speak abusively to him, saying, you are the Christ, are you not? Save yourself and us too. Selfish, ain't he? In response, the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God at all? Now that you have received the same judgment, and we rightly so, for we are getting back what we deserve for the things we did, but this man did nothing at all. So he said to Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. So he knew that Jesus was going someplace. So he said, remember me when you get there into your kingdom. Now notice what Jesus says. And he said to him, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, most versions of the Bible does, include, does not include the, uh, the punctuation. Now, let me tell you why that's so important. For if he says, truly I tell you today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Today, right here, today, you're going to be with me in paradise. That's how most of the other scriptures read it. And so they believe the guy is going to heaven. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, paradise is not in heaven. It never was. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the Garden of Eden. That wasn't in heaven. So the promised paradise that the scriptures promise, the one that Jesus is referring to, yes, Jesus even believed in a paradise. It wasn't heaven. Now let's prove this. Okay. He says, remember me when you get into your kingdom. So the kingdom and paradise are not the same thing. Interesting, ain't it? That's the first thing. Second thing, this so-called wannabe evildoer had faith because he knew that Jesus was going to be the king of this kingdom. Not even the disciples understood that at that point. They thought he was restoring the kingdom at that time when he was, well, here's the point. If Jesus had meant that this individual was going to be with him in paradise that day, that they were both going to go to heaven, then why did Jesus remain in the grave for three days? So. When he says, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise, he wasn't speaking of that day. He was saying, truly, I tell you, this day, I'm speaking to you now. So truly, I tell you today, you will be in the future, future tense, with me in paradise. So he says, remember me when you get into your kingdom. So he knew that Jesus was going to establish a kingdom. So remember me when that time comes. But because so many people have used versions of the Bible that the translators left out the context of the conversation by not putting in the punctuations, so many people are led to believe that this individual was speaking and recognizing a different time that he was speaking of that day and that Jesus was going to heaven that day. Everybody knows that he was raised on the third day, that he remained in the grave for three days. Now, if you don't know that Jesus was raised on the third day and he remained in the grave for three days, let's have somebody who witnessed his resurrection tell you about it. This young man went through a whole lot. Ladies and gentlemen, this young man went through so much just to make sure everybody understood. His, well, sometimes people pronounce the name Stephen. Others pronounce it Stephen. However you want to pronounce the young man's name, let's let you know what he says. This is the Moses 
who said to the sons of Israel, God will raise up from you among your brothers a prophet like me. This is the one who came to be among the congregations in the wilderness with the angels who spoke to him at Mount Sinai with our forefathers, and he received living sacred pronouncements to give to us. Ladies and gentlemen, this prophet that they were speaking of, this was the word of God. So whenever you hear in the scriptures God speaking, it was this prophet that was promised that was speaking to him. This is the one that came to be among the congregation. He was also the angel of death. He was the one who protected Israel, who brought them through the Red Sea. Yes, yes, I know it says God did it, but yes, he used him as an instrument to do it. And just like in Moses' day, up until now, our forefathers refused to obey him, not Moses, but they pushed him aside in their hearts to turn back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Moses wasn't around, so they weren't talking about pushing Moses aside. He's talking about pushing God aside to return to Egypt because he was the one leading them through the wilderness, through his prophet, the one who was to come, saying to Aaron, make for us gods to go ahead of us. Now, here is the point about where he was. I just need for you guys to pay attention. Obstinate men, uncircumcised in hearts and ears. You are always resisting the Holy Spirit as your forefathers did, so do you. Well, it says, so you do, but you get the point. Which one of the prophets did your father's forefathers not prosecute? Go ahead. Which one did they not persecute? Yes, they killed those who announced in advance the coming of the righteous one, Christ Jesus whose betrayers and murderers you have become. You who received the law transmitted through angels, but did not keep it. And then notice what he says, and at hearing these things, they were infuriated in their hearts, and they began to grind their teeth, or as some versions say, gnash their teeth at him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he recognized that Jesus was returning to heaven with his father. And thus, that's why he would actually ask for them to be forgiven. They did not want to hear that. So notice what one of his fellow apostles said as far as, now remember, that's more than three days later. Okay, pay attention. While the two were speaking to the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came up to them. And they were annoyed because the apostles were teaching the people openly and declaring the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Okay, we can go to the second chapter where Peter is talking to them, who was also an eyewitness of this resurrection. See, that's the unique thing. Back then, there were eyewitnesses. Doesn't matter if somebody said, oh, no, I don't believe it. Doesn't matter. Okay. That he was raised up on the third day. It doesn't matter what other people believe. This is not about faith. This is about understanding what the prophecy said. So, because they all knew that he was to be raised up for the dead. Notice what it says. Because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath, a promise, that he would sit one of his offsprings on his throne, speaking of David's, the promised offspring. Remember, remember me when you get in your kingdom? See, that individual understood this. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he forsaken in the grave, nor did his flesh see corruption. Why? Because the body doesn't start to decay until the fourth day. He was resurrected on the third day. God resurrected Jesus. Of this, we are all witnesses. So, Jesus could not have meant that that individual was going to paradise that very same day. It would have been impossible because that would have contradicted Scripture. The Scriptures don't contradict themselves, people. So if you ever have anybody showing you something in the Bible and it seems like it's contradicting, check the information out for yourself. 
get the truth about the information. Don't take my word for anything. As a matter of fact, everything I just showed you, double check what I just showed you. Okay, double check it. You saw where the verses were. Double check it. Prove it to yourself. I have a lot of people who speak to me and they have a belief in God. Okay, it is fine to have a belief in God. It is fine to have a belief in a God. But ladies and gentlemen, I do not believe in God. What you talking about, Willis? I kid you not. I do not believe in God. I believe in Jehovah. And that's the same thing. No, it isn't. There are millions of gods, people, and I do believe that those gods exist. But the God I serve, he's the one who named himself. As I've said many, many times, every other thing in existence was named by somebody. Go ahead. Find one thing that you can identify that named itself. But this God, this one who calls himself the Almighty, you notice that no other God calls themselves Almighty? <laughs> Go ahead, take a look. But not only does he call himself the Almighty God, the sovereign of the universe, but notice what he says about himself. He calls himself the only true God. So see, I don't believe in God. I believe in Jehovah. If he's the only true God, and that means that there are many false gods, if he's the only true God, then I don't believe in God. I believe in Jehovah. I believe in that only true God. That's who I serve. I know, I know you think it's a technicality. And bless your little heart, it's not a technicality. Because since I was a child, I remember, like I told you guys about Jim Hill, the newscaster. I don't know Jim Hill. I just knew his sister because she went to school with me. And the school I went to was a so-called prestigious school in Brentwood, California. And his sister, who was in the same grade I was in, was having a conversation. We were talking about scripture. I don't just talk about scripture now. I've been talking about scripture all my life. This is me. This is who I is. I love the God that I serve. I thought you said you didn't believe in God. You better leave me alone. Well, anyway, she made a comment, and I said, you and my God won't let me do that. That's what I told her. My God won't let me do that. She said, we all have the same God. And she said it with an attitude. Y'all know what I'm talking about, if you know about anything about teenage black women. Okay? And I said, no, you do not serve the same God that I serve. And I'm going to tell all of you the same thing. You all do not serve the same God that I serve. I don't care if you do call his name Jehovah. He requires certain conduct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made mistakes in the past. And I've admitted that. You know, I didn't admit that because I needed kudos from any of you guys. I don't need your approval to serve my God. I need his. I don't mind telling you guys where I've made a mistake. But what I can promise you is that the God I serve, every other person out there who chooses or wishes to serve the same God, then they have the same views that I have. They're following the same rules that I'm following. They're obeying the same commands that I'm obeying. Do you see? That's how life works. That's how he works. So I'm not trying to bring more people into the fold. Because if you're thinking that, you're definitely going to have to rethink it. You're definitely going to have to rethink it. Because it is more than interesting. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I have a refrigerator in this RV. Yeah, I changed the subject. I can do that. I have a refrigerator in this RV. And the refrigerator works on propane, and it works on electricity. And I haven't been using it because I've been noticing that the check light will come on. It's like, you know, you got something wrong. Go check it. 
And I was checking everything, making sure everything was connected. And I couldn't figure out anything. And I don't want to because this vehicle is where I stay. I can't take this fifth wheel into the shop and let them work on a refrigerator, which will cost me almost, I promise you, it's going to cost over $700. And I'm willing to do that because it's the refrigerator. If I want to replace the refrigerator, whoo, doggy. That's almost $1,000 for a refrigerator for an RV because it's propane and electric. That's why I got the freezer and I have a mini refrigerator. So I have three refrigerators in here, okay? That's why I'm working on the solar panel. See, that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about what's been going on. And the thing about the scriptures and all that, I just, want people to know because some people are going to and i know some people can't stand that well that's okay i just want you to know these are my videos if you're going to listen to my videos and me talk then i talk about my god that's what i do i talk about my god i am going over information about him i when i go to sleep at night i promise you all i'm doing is listening to either bibles or talks by individuals about the Bible. And I'm letting that play all night long. Every single night that plays. When I wake up in the middle of the night, that's on. I do that for my benefit. As I mentioned, when I was in a coma, I remember my sister and I remember Willie Williams. Willie, Willie was all right. Willie, uh, he, he was a good friend. He's not dead or anything. We just, I haven't spoken to Willie since, I think, 1990, probably 2000. Uh, probably 2000, 2001, but I haven't spoke to Willie. We've grown apart. But Willie came to my bed and he says, man, you're stronger than this. And you can get through this. You're just going to have to fight. I remember him saying that. I heard him saying that. I remember while in that coma, my sister saw me moving my finger. See, I wasn't in a coma. I was awake. You guys just don't understand. Many of you guys think people who are in a coma are asleep. They're not sleep, people. They can hear you. They can see lights coming on and off. Some of them won't remember it when they are out of the coma because it causes brain damage. And that's the problem with being in a coma. Oh, so that's your excuse, huh? You were in a coma, so that's what the brain damage? You better leave me alone and get on out of here before you get hurt. Go on. All right. Go. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. And so I remembered what they were saying while I was, quote, unquote, in a coma. And I figured if I could remember that, then by all means, since we're living in the last days, and Jesus made the comment, nope, we're going to turn there. Um, matter of fact, this one, I may not remember exactly where it is, but we definitely going to turn here because Luke, I think we're the 18th chapter. So I am hoping it's the 18th chapter. Roughly verse number, I didn't say 183, I said 18th chapter. And we're going to look roughly about verse number 8. There we are. I tell you, he will cause justice to be done to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man arrives, will he really find this faith in the earth? What faith is he, talk, is he talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, you want to know who I am? I'm going to explain to you who I am because there have been a many of judges and a many of other people who have understood this about me because they made this they made this statement. I have a tenacity, but my tenacity comes from this section of scripture. I didn't know where it was when I was a kid and I didn't care. I just knew of the situation. So here's the story. He says, then he went on to tell them an illustration about, uh oh, sorry, about the need for them to always pray and not give up. 
Everybody who's known me knows that that's one thing I refuse to do. I refuse to quit and I refuse to stop and I will keep beating a dead horse because I promise you, if I don't have the power to resurrect that horse, I promise you I will beat him till he gets up because he's tired of me beating him. Don't believe me? Pay attention. Saying, in a certain city, there was a judge who had no fear of God and no respect for men. And there was also a widow in that city who kept going to him, the judge, and saying, See that I get justice from my legal opponent. Well, for a while he was unwilling, kind of for a long time. But afterwards he said to himself, Although I do not fear God or respect any man, because this widow keeps making me trouble, I will see she gets justice so that she will not keep coming and wearing me out with her demand. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. There's an old woman. He could have waited her out. Okay, she's going to be dead soon. But uh-uh. He says, this woman is getting on my last nerve. She keeps coming to me and coming to me about the same thing. I done told y'all. I've been going after these courts for over 20 years now, trying to correct things. I ain't letting nothing go. I've already told you guys, when you get all the way to the Supreme Court, you start all the way back in state court, and you keep going right back through the system all over again. You just bring up different aspects of the same issue. It's a technique, and it does work. Pay attention. Then the Lord said, hear what the judge, although unrighteous, said. Certainly then, will not God cause justice to be done for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night while he is patient with them? The chosen ones. Well, everybody's not chosen ones. Chosen ones are a special group. These are the ones spoken of that if it were not for their sake, no flesh would be saved, referring to the Great Tribulation. So pay attention. Even if you're not one of those chosen ones, certainly then will God cause, will he not cause justice to be done for those who serve him, who cry out to him day and night while he is patient toward them? What's his patience? Because even the chosen ones are imperfect. Even the chosen ones make mistakes. That's what Paul said. He says, and yet that is what some of you were. But you have been washed clean. You have been sanctified. You have been declared righteous, not by man, but by God. So I tell you, he will cause justice to be done to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man, Jesus, arrives, will he really find this faith in the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my rule. I keep crying out to my God day and night. Told you I kept asking him for certain things, but I'm also asking him for justice, and I'm also asking him about you all. Those of you who are suffering, dealing with the courts, and them not doing what they're supposed to do. I know for a fact that he will cause justice. Where do you think I'm getting the information? It's all regarding my communication with him regarding this. Why? Because I have faith that he will answer my prayer. Not because I pray to him. Notice what he says. Then he went on to tell him an illustration about the need for them to pray and not give up. If I'm going to him in prayer, I'm not going to give up. Let me explain this to y'all. So we can go on with this video so I can finish telling y'all about what's going on. The eyes of Jehovah are roaming about through all the earth to show his strength on behalf of those whose hearts are complete towards him. I listen to the scriptures at night and those Bible-based talks so that my heart can remain complete towards him. But I don't just listen to any Bible-based talk. Oh, God, no. It has to be from scripture. That's why I said Bible-based. There are a lot of people who do so-called sermons where they'll talk about one or two scriptures and then that's that's it and everything else is about everything else. No, the ones I listen to is the whole theme is scriptural, where they're showing the different scriptures throughout. So I don't care what you do. I'm telling you what I do. 
Don't compare yourself to me because you will not win that. Well, technically, you will win because I'll let you do it and I'll walk away because if that's what you want to do, so be it. Okay, but it won't be the victory you think it will be. Ladies and gentlemen, my aim right now is to understand two things. Everybody wanted to know how to get out of the system. Um, we're at 30 minutes. So this is the part, if you're going to pay attention, 30 minutes is where you should start. Everybody's been wondering how to get out of the system. You cannot get out of the system, ladies and gentlemen. I guarantee you, you cannot get out of the system. I also guarantee you that things are about to change drastically because when people start going into court and saying, I am the beneficiary of that estate, I am the beneficiary of that trust, I own a beneficial interest in this matter. Why am I being called into this arena? Where is the trustee? The trustee is responsible. Where is the trustee? That's all you got to do for right now. You don't have to say anything else. If the court sits up there and comes up with some statement, and they will, they're, they're going to get clever because they like to get clever. They like to come up with a clever statement that you won't know how to respond. So let me give you your response without knowing what they're going to say, although I already know what they're going to say. Excuse me, you did not answer my question. I asked you, where's your jurisdiction over a beneficiary? If anybody says, hold on, I'm talking. Excuse me, I don't, did you not hear me ask a question? Answer my question. Do you follow me? There's no need for any other conversation. No, I don't want to hear any of that. I asked you a question. Where did you get the authority? Ladies and gentlemen. You're not there challenging their authority because they don't have any. So stop having that as your mindset. You're challenging their jurisdiction, but you're going in there challenging their jurisdiction as a beneficiary. So take that deed of trust. Take, pay attention. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you something. It's gonna be helpful because we can prove it by law. Ladies and gentlemen, take the deed of trust. And when you take the deed of trust, what I want you to do after that, a declaration of trust, I said deed of trust. I apologize. Declaration of trust. Yeah, I got a lot on my mind today, but I, I'll explain in a minute. Take the declaration of trust. Put that on the record. Identify who the trustee is. Should be the all caps name. I mean, excuse me. All cat's name is not trustee. I said, like I said, I'm very distracted. So the trustee is the United States in all of its forms. USA, US, United States, District of Columbia, DC, District, all of those acronyms to define government, even your state government. Make them the trustee of your trust agreement. Look. Okay, all government is a trust. That's all I put in. You guys got case text. Pull up your case law. Get the understanding. All property held by the state is held upon a public trust. Well, do you know that that creature was created by the state? That's property of the state, not your property? You understand? The public domain is held by government as part of a trust. You're said to be a member of the public. So there's a trust agreement. So that means that government and all of those who work for government are trustees. Comprehension? It is truly my hope that there's a comprehension. All right. Give me one second. I'm checking some things. All right, next one.
1951, the Commonwealth created by statute the system as both a trust and a government agency. Now, Puerto Rico Enabling Act for the system and the bond resolution. Interesting, ain't that? Look at that. Puerto Rico Enabling Act created a trust. Ain't that the system? They called it the system. And it provided for pensions and retirement benefits of employees and officers of the Commonwealth of Government. They created a trust. Ain't that interesting? I keep trying to tell you guys, everything is trust. See, it is a living tenet of our society and not mere rhetoric that a public office is a public trust. Understand? And it is necessary that you understand. Okay? Now, I need you guys. I'll be right back. As many of you may know, YouTube has prevented me from putting videos up for the last seven days and seven full days. So it won't be until Sunday. I thought it was today, the seventh day, but nope, they said Sunday. And so it won't be until tomorrow that I'm able to put these videos up, about five of them. I have been able to do all the little minor things that I've been trying to do and hoping to do. Uh, by next weekend, I will redo the tile. The person living here was an older person and everything is brown. <laughs> and so I'm going to lighten the floor up with putting down some marble tile to lighten the place up because I don't do the depression thing and dark colors, depression. Now the walls are white. So the tile is going to be similar to the wallpaper and I have the tile. I'll probably have to go get two more boxes because I was only going to use it for a small area because they didn't have the towel to match the one on the floor. And I'm not stripping the towel. This towel, I'm going to clean the floor. I'm going to pull up all of the debris and everything. And the towel is going to lay down on top of the tile. Why would I do that? Because I need to shore things up. It's not going to interfere with the aesthetics of the room but I am taking care of that. And I just put up a bunch of solar lighting outside. So now this place will look like daytime. <laughs> when, when I go out at, outside at night, it will be lit up. So that's what I did. Three hours this morning of just lighting. And because the ground is dirt, I took a tarp that is 50 feet long and I put that in front of the house for the car to drive upon. Now, the reason why I put the tarp there is because I have three of them. I got three of them. They were cheap, 50 feet long by, I think it's 10 feet. And so because it was cheap, this tarp, I decided to use it as a driveway on one side of the property and the cars are parked on the other side of the property. But if I have to come and it's raining, and I have to come to the front door because the automobiles are parked on the opposite side of the front door. Then I can pull up and don't have to worry about stepping in mud. I also have these little uh, decks. It's like these little jigsaw puzzles for what people use for their deck flooring. And they're made out of a plastic material. Well, that's the sidewalk, uh, spaced out sidewalk in front of the property. For now. So I have taken care of about three and a half hours worth of work this morning. So please understand, without having access to YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, doing research for you guys and doing the videos, that stuff was taking hours. And so I've been able to accomplish so much in the last week. And I realized how much of my time goes into trying to help all of you. Now, I don't regret that. I don't regret that in the least, but I can definitely tell you that by tomorrow, I should have the solar panels. I just have to get to the solar panels, finish cutting the poles, and I'll do that this afternoon because I really am planning to set up all 10 solar panels tomorrow. I have the, the auxiliary battery and the MTTP, 
which is the charge controller. I have all of that. I just need to hook it up. And at first I was kind of, oh God, this is going to take forever because I don't know what I'm doing. I ain't done this in a long time. <laughs> but nope. I realized how simple it was because someone actually sent me a power cell battery that I'm using for the computer and I'm able to leave my computer on for two straight days without having to do any recharging. I think I could leave it on for four days without there being an issue because it's just the computer but I charge up other things. And so while I am um, doing the freezer, I won't hook the freezer up to it because then I will only have a half a day, probably eight hours. But the situation is when I need to bring the temperature up and or down in the freezer, then I turn on the generator. I'm having to turn the generator on probably three times a week now as opposed to eight times a week. So the individual who donated the battery has done me a very good favor. Okay, with that being said, let's get back to what you guys need to be doing when you're going into these courts. You need to understand that everything is a trust. When I say this is the year of the trust, this is the year of the understanding that everything is a trust. So what SATCOM did, look, ladies and gentlemen, I understood this in 2012 when I created the name Securities Acquisition Trust Commission and the Security Investment Trust Commission, both SATCOM and SITCOM. So this is not me in the least telling you guys that I didn't know what I was doing, that I just was taking a chance. That's, that would be a lie. Y'all need to understand that this was a plan. Yes, I know it took a little while, but ladies and gentlemen, it's very hard when nobody else has the information that you're the only one who knows it in the little circle. And the people we have at SACOM, they are honestly wonderful people, honestly. The ones we've had at SACOM were wonderful people. It's just this was over their heads, and many of them weren't getting it right away. He also explained that that money paid by the taxpayers goes into the trust fund, which is a government creation. Understand, this is dealing with Social Security Administration. Remember I told you about the trust funds? Remember we talked about you having pay attention? You having a security interest in the collateral. And as long as you have a security interest in the collateral, the hour style money orders work when you do it right. You don't need to use their uh, so-called account numbers and routing numbers. But if you chose to, that is not illegal. It is illegal for someone who doesn't have the right to do it. And many of you don't understand what your rights are. And so you're getting in trouble. That's why I keep saying do your own homework and research. Many of you are not paying attention to me. You're just listening to the words and you're jumping out there. Oh, I can get rid of my debt just by writing a money order. Without understanding the reason why you get to do it. I only told you. I started the hour style money orders because I knew I had a right to do it. Go back and listen to the videos. I tell you. Everything I do, I do because I know it's my right to do it. As one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I cannot violate the law. Because that takes away from the whole point of saying I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses follow the law. I don't care what you thought, what you heard, or what you believe. True Christian Witnesses of Jehovah. That's right. I said Jehovah's Witnesses are Christian. Can you imagine that? Because if you didn't believe that, if you thought something different, that's your problem. By the way, we're not defined by you. You don't get to tell us who we are. I've been telling that to people for years. Nobody can tell me who I am. You can't walk up to me and tell me, well, you're this and you're that and you're this. and you, Because people have the habit of telling somebody who and what they are. You don't have that right. Only I can tell you who I am. You can tell me what you thought. And I can tell you, I don't care. Because that's what I would usually tell you, is I don't care. Okay? 
Sorry, I turned on the wrong one. Uh, uh oh. I'm about to yell at somebody because I told that person to call me, and that person didn't call me. You know what that person did? They emailed me. <sighs> you, you, you think people going to follow instructions, and the next thing you know, they don't follow instructions, and you're sitting up there going, what the flying part? And they just, <laughs> it is amazing. Well, anyway, I'm about to turn my music back on because, I, you know, I can't live without my music. I was trying to keep Bobby because he was talking about not being cruel, but it didn't stay on. And so it is the I heart junk. And so I am waiting for it to load. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, it's still back on. It's still I heart. It's Bobby Brown. And now I got to get him to play. Huh. Okay, finally. All right. So Bobby Brown, I think he's going to start from the beginning. Don't know, because it's just now starting up. So I'm going to let him play in the background whenever he gets started. Let's get back to talking about you guys and your capacity. From the very beginning, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about capacities. Because it's all about capacities. Remember, the trustees don't get to create trust to incorporate you into their trust. They don't have the right because they are trustees. I'm going to skip that one because it talks about the Indians. Okay, we're going to skip past that. Through your conduct, you violated the trust of the Social Security Administration placed in you. And in turn, the trust that the public places in its government to handle its funds responsibly. This is U.S. versus Ramos. More than likely, he may have been an employee with Social Security Administration. But you guys really need to understand that these trusts exist. A municipal corporation is a trustee of the inhabitants of that corporation. Inhabitants of the corporation. Well, all government has created a municipal corporation, ladies and gentlemen. So they are trustees. The District of Columbia has created a municipal corporation. Watch this. We're going to do a new tab. And watch this. Yeah, I knew I hit that stupid capitalization. It's supposed to be the District of Columbia has created a corporation for municipal purposes. Thank you for correcting that. Okay. I'm looking for DC code. Hold on. Uh, let's do this. Right there. A corporation. For municipal, uh oh, all right, and there it is. That's what I'm looking for right there. DC code one 102. I know I could have put in DC code one 101 through 103, but I wanted to go this route. Pay attention. The District of Columbia has created a body corporate for municipal purposes. The district has created a government. The district has created a government. When did the district become a government, ladies and gentlemen? Who is it governing? Okay. The district has created a government by the name the District of Columbia. By which name it is construed a body corporate for municipal purposes and may contract and be contracted with trust agreements, sue or be sued, plead or interplead, subjecting to jurisdiction, 
have a seal and exercise all the powers of a municipal corporation. All the powers of a municipal corporation. When did, hold on, when did municipal corporations get power? Not inconsistent with the Constitution and laws of the United States and the provisions of this code. Well, why are you showing us this? Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention, because I don't think you guys were paying attention. A municipal corporation is the trustee of the inhabitants of that corporation. The United States government is a corporation. It is a municipal corporation. They are the trustees for the inhabitants. You live in California. You live in Puerto Rico. You live in Rhode Island. You live in New York. Your state, your county, your city, or created municipal corporations. They are trustees for the people, the inhabitants of the corporation. Go and look at your birth certificate. It will say that you were in an incorporated area. Hold on. My certificate of live birth is right here. Hold on. Certificate of live birth. Where's that corporation junk at? Inside the corporate. Okay, if outside the corporate limits. Okay. So, all government is a corporation for municipal purposes. Get it right. Get it straight. Get it in your head. They are trustees. Hold on. And it holds all its property. All property is in the state. The ownership of all property is in the state. It holds all property in a general and substantial, although not in a strictly technical sense, in trust for them. All property is held by the state. That means they have seized your property rights. This was 1900, ladies and gentlemen. This is the United States Supreme Court that says that. Hold on. They are the people of the state inhabiting that particular subdivision of its territory and fluctuating class constantly passing out of the scope of the trust by removal and death and as constantly blah, blah, blah. See, when you die, you pass out of the trust or you can be removed from the trust. Ladies and gentlemen, you're the beneficiaries of a trust. Why would you want to be removed? You better go seek them benefits. The 14th Amendment is not what gave you the benefits. The 14th Amendment created a new class of citizen for which the trustees can rule over. But as one of the people, one of the people of your state, the 14th Amendment does not matter. That's why you keep hearing these people talk about being a state citizen. Okay? 14th Amendment does not supersede the 10th and 11th Amendment. Okay? Just that simple. It may be called a trust, but only in the sense that all public property held by public corporations are for public uses, uh, for public uses is a trust. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let them misguide you on this. It's a trust because it's held by government, and the government holds all property in trust because that's what the people did. Okay? Ballerina! Ballerina! All right. Uh, we don't care about the trust fund. See? The members of the city council are trustees. The body holds a trust for the inhabitants of the city. That makes you a beneficiary. Start letting them know that you are a beneficiary. Start letting them know that you are the beneficiaries of that public trust. Pull up the law in your state showing that your state is a municipal corporation. Okay? The trust is a cornerstone of voluntary compliance with our nation's tax laws. That trust is a cornerstone of voluntary compliance 
with our nation's tax laws. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lie. Do not believe that. The trust does not create voluntary compliance. Do you see? All taxes are voluntary. Pay attention. The trust is a cornerstone of voluntary compliance with our nation's tax laws. Okay? Taxes are voluntary. I didn't say this. You can go, this is a 2121 case or 2021 case. This just happened in June. This is the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals for the District at Washington, D.C. This is what they said. Okay? So, oh, look at that. Our actions must inspire trust and confidence in the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, uh, so even the, even the Internal Revenue Service realizes that taxes are voluntary. Okay, that they don't have any authority, but when you sign that paper declaring under penalty of perjury that you are a taxpayer, it's no longer voluntary. Thus, the marina is held in public trust by the city as trustees. Ladies and gentlemen, this information has been here the whole time. Okay, I really, really should be contacting uh, <laughs> case text dot com and letting them know that they have received an uptick in attention because I've been focusing on them in my videos, but I ain't going to do that. Case text is all right because they are providing this service. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a wonderful service to have, especially if you're dealing with the trustees. Okay. Really that simple. If you're dealing with the trustees, it's a wonderful service to have. To have. Sorry, the reason why Elton stopped playing is because that Google Voice junk came up. You know, like uh, you have uh, that Hello Google thing. That just popped up. Okay, so now that you know that everything is trust, and what I did, as you notice, this didn't have any federal courts. I pulled up all circuit courts and all that. We're going to clear all. So that the next time I search... It will do everything, okay? And this is that Henry Clay observed in March 1829 that government is a trust, and the officers of government are trustees. Who are they trustees of? Are created for the benefit of the people. So both the trust and the trustees are created for the benefit of the people. So where does government get authority over you? You are a beneficiary. You are a beneficiary. You need to start announcing this. Okay? You just need to understand this. This is not the only... Look at how many times this is said. Okay? All property are held by the state are held in trust. All the property, a power's property, and offices constitute a public trust to be administered by its authority. This is the Attorney General, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, an opinion by the Attorney General of Wisconsin. Okay? Public purposes as limited limit of power. Any power conferred on a municipality must be exercised for a public use or purpose as distinguished from a private purpose. A municipal corporation is a public institution created to promote public and distinguished from private objectives. All its powers, properties, and offices constitute a public trust administered by its authorities. Ladies and gentlemen, what just happened is my audio. Let me one second. I gotta make sure it's still going. Because what happens is my headset just shut off. So let me turn it back on. Okay. Okay, my head's off. I'm hoping that you guys were still able to hear me. And you should have been able to hear me. But because it shut off, it may have cut off the volume. My hope is that it did not do that. All right. These are other cases, and that can 
capacity, it holds a public fund and trust for the people. Okay, this one says the same thing, and you're going to find others. Wait, 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 hold on. We're going to do this one. But this court has also stated that it is pretty well settled under the American system of government that the public office is a public trust and that the public property and public money in the hands of or under the control of such officer or officers constitute a trust fund in which the officialized trustee should be held responsible to the same degree as a trustee of a private trust fund. Ladies and gentlemen, they are trustees. You are a beneficiary. The people, you are part of the grantorship, but you are not the grantor of the trust. The people as a whole are the grantors. Okay? Such title is held in trust for all the inhabitants as a public and government agency. You are the beneficiaries. You don't have to explain to them what the benefits are. You don't have to explain nothing. Okay? It's up to them to explain themselves. So that's why you only want to know, where did you get the authority? Where is the power coming from? And do not give me no statute or no so-called case site. Okay? Really that simple. The document that we told you guys about yesterday... It is up online. Let me see if I can find the document so that I can let you guys know um, the title of that document. And it's in the folder I told you, standing before the land, I am the beneficiary of the public, public trust doctrine. And as such, a beneficiary of that trust. That document has all of this information in it. And it's in the document but i forgot the name of the folder it's in you guys are going to have to watch the video yesterday because it tells you where the document is i just gave you the title go to satcom 911.com so satcom 911.com forward slash pdfs s pdfs pdfs in all capital letters dot html and then in there, you can do a search for the document specifically. Or you can go watch the video that was done yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an hour and two minutes. I got to go because I have to finish up. I'm working on a lawsuit for the people who are incarcerated here in California because I haven't let that go. And I have another complaint, set of complaints I have to finish this weekend. Okay? But this is so that you guys know public funds are trust funds and as such are sacred and are to be used only for the operation of government. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that they are trustees, where do they get the authority? If there's no corpus delecti, they have no authority. You guys what, haven't been understanding the technicalities for which they're operating, the technicalities they're using in their words and in deciding these cases. That's why you have to just check them by saying, where are you getting the authority over a beneficiary? Just that simple. You don't have to argue with them. Many of you guys want to argue, which makes no sense. Then when people are talking to me, they think because they looked at this case or that case that they know more. Then they want to argue with me. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time for that. I'm going to show you what the law says. I don't care if you read it from some stupid case. Judges don't make the law, people. That's why I show you their contradictions. That's why when they say something wrong, I point out to you, Nope, they cannot say that, cannot do that. And then I've shown you too many videos where they have two different decisions. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on, watch this. Man, I love this song. You know, being without you, babe, I'm leaving. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I never knew who sung this song, honestly. But all I can tell you is I've always loved this song. Okay? It's just perfect. Now, notice this. This was 2021. I am the named beneficiary of the trust. 
okay? I am the income beneficiary of the trust during my life and also one of the trustees. You don't want to be one of the trustees, okay? Austin created the trust with the intent that assets transferred to the trust be held for my benefit while I am living and for the benefit of my beneficiaries after my death, all under the trust terms and condition. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the courts must recognize a trust and it must recognize your position. Pay attention. <coughs> hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you see this? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. That part is what I like about this song. It's not so much the lyrics, but it's just the way they did the melody and the beat. It's just, I love the song. Okay. All right. That dun, 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 dun. it's just, hey, perfect. It, it's just the right song at the right time. We're going to continue them in a minute because I have some more information for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, something that you all must understand, you're going into these courts and you're coming in and saying, I'm the beneficiary of that trust. If you truly are the beneficiary of that trust, you must understand to prove that you are a beneficiary of the trust. When you're going into court, who is it that is bringing forth the lawsuit? They claim it's the people of the state, but it's actually the trustees because they do it in the name of the state. What is the state? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Anybody? The state is a municipal corporation. The state is a municipal corporation. And what did we learn about municipal corporations? What are they there for the benefit of? They're there for the benefit of the people, benefit of the people, the benefit of the people, the benefit of the people. Since the municipal corporation is there for the benefit of the people, you're one of those people. They don't have the authority to bring a beneficiary into that court unless you harmed another beneficiary. Go back and look at the agreement between the parties. They don't have the authority to bring a beneficiary into the court unless you harmed another beneficiary. Go back. Take a look. Unless there is a corpus electi, then they have no jurisdiction. Now, we're going to put this in because some case law will say this is not true. So watch this. I don't know how to spell delecti. No, I'm spelling it backwards. I, I think I'm close with the lecti. I know you didn't find the words because the lecti is wrong, but I'm close. So where is my delecti? D E L E C. Okay. All right. Under our law, the corpus electi must be proved. There must be injury. Now, hold on. We got to do something because there have been some misunderstandings of this word right here. So we're going to do Google. Google, 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 Google. Okay. See, I knew I still spelled it wrong. Okay. Anyway, we have corpus electi. Facts and circumstances constituting a breach of law. Concrete evidence of a crime, such as a corpse. See, a violation of statute is not a crime. Even if it's a commercial crime, it is not a crime. And it's a Latin term meaning the body of the crime. Actually, does it mean the body of the crime? It means injured body, injured party. Okay. Referring to the principle, uh, referring to the principle that a crime must be proved to have occurred 
before a per person can be convicted. Corpus electi, ladies and gentlemen, there is no corpus electi if there's not an injured party because the Constitution only gives the courts authority over someone depriving someone of life, liberty, and due process of law. It's not on a federal level like they say in uh, some of the courts now. Well, it only is against, no, that's a lie. So, ladies and gentlemen, there must be an injured party. You cannot cause injury to something that does not exist. Cannot cause injury to a fiction. No, let's do this. Let's do legal definition. So I put legal definition of a crime. Oh, I said if. Haha. <laughs> Let's do that. I hit the button next to the O. Legal definition of a crime. I could have stuck with crime is behavior other than by act or omission, defined by statutory or common law as deserving of punishment. Not statutory, but they call it a crime, but it was common law. Crimes are prosecuted by government attorneys. No, crimes are prosecuted by government attorneys and or by individuals. Okay, but since the government attorneys, the trustees, are bringing a beneficiary into the courtroom, then they need to show jurisdiction over the beneficiary. Okay, now here is upcounsel.com. I could care less because they're not a legal dictionary. Okay, this is the dictionary, law.com. That's not a legal dictionary. Legal dictionary, I'll go with this one because it's a legal dictionary. An offense against the state that is punishable. An act or omission may also be civilly actionable. Yes, civilly, because it becomes a civil crime. A civil crime? more than likely in most natures are a commercial crime. Okay, so you'll find that they have defined what a crime was according to statute. That does not work. A crime has to be a violation of law in which there is injury to the public or a member of the public or a term of prison and jail. See, that's statute. A crime is a violation where there is an injured person, a member of the public, okay? Just that simple. See, there is some sentiment for excluding from the crime category crimes without victims, such as consensual acts or violations in which only the perpetrator is hurt or involved in such personal use of illegal drugs. If there is not an injured party, the courts have no jurisdiction. The courts can only bring forth an action for where a party has a right that has been violated. The state has no rights. What do you mean the state has no rights? It's government. Yes, the state is government, but the state cannot be harmed unless you harm a member of the public. Sorry. Sorry, it's just the way it is. All right, they just keep changing definitions, and so I thought I'd just show you this thing about corpus electi and show you the fact that, uh, hold on, let's do this. I put a statute that's not law. Oh, look at that. I didn't even messed up statute. I apologize, y'all. I really am not distracted right now, but I'm trying to get this over with. Statutes and rules made by legislative bodies that are distinguished from case law are precedent, which decided by courts and regulations issued by government agencies. Well, I didn't, I didn't ask what statutes are. I said a statute is not law. Okay, this is somebody.org. 
The United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. No federal or state law may violate it. Statutes are not law, ladies and gentlemen. The supreme law of the land is the common law. It is not the Constitution. People are misunderstanding that, and they've misunderstood that for centuries because the courts have said that. Okay? The legislature was given no authority to enact law. Go back. Take a look. It says Congress shall make no law, so they cannot violate the Bill of Rights. That's how the Bill of Rights started. Look at it. The Bill of Rights was putting the limits on them enacting stupid laws. Statutes are not law. Just that simple. Now, we're going to do it one more time because we can't get it this way because they're not going to let this uh, copy. And this is not going to give us the direct information. This is going to give us the way round and about. No, no. Where are you at? Okay, right here. This is where I'm supposed to be. Ooh, okay. We're going to put... We're going to put that there. And we're not going to do the keyword search because it'll look up statute and it'll look up law and not give me the phrase I'm looking for. A law is a statute, not a rule of law enunciated by a court. Yeah, right. A law is not a statute. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I got a call coming in. So we're going to let y'all go. And, well, that person who just called, I'll have to call them back. We're going to let this go um, because I did ask somebody to call me back and that appears to be that purpose. Um, that purpose, the person. The purpose of the statute are not the law. Only the statute is law. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not true either. In other words, an invalid law is no law at all. Okay, statutes are not law. As a matter of fact, if you go back and look, the United States Constitution is said to be the supreme law of the land. Well, a statute is not part of that supreme law. Okay? Indeed, the act of the legislature is not a law in an ordinary sense. What? An act of a legislator is not a law in an ordinary sense? What? Hold on. On the other hand, as already suggested, it in effect prohibits such action by confining the remedy to an award or finding to be made by an commission which performs purely political functions which the legislature could have performed itself. Indeed, the act, this particular act, is not a law in the ordinary sense. Okay. No, uh, statutes are prima facie evidence of law. Okay. So, the courts keep uh, bouncing back and forth. Okay, an assumption or presumption is not a law. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. Y'all take care. I'm out of here.